Hey everybody, what's going on? Rob Sesternino, and I am so excited to have you with us for this project, which I have been waiting a week to bring to you. It is called Hiding in Plain Sight, my all Gabler rewatch, or as I've been calling it internally, oops, all Gabler. I have gone through Survivor 43, and I have rewatched every second of Mike Gabler on the screen with a couple of different questions. You know, Gabler's win in Survivor 43 had so many different reactions from Survivor fans. Um, there was shock, anger, bewilderment. Is the Survivor editing broken? How did this happen? I don't understand. Was Cassidy robbed? Was Owen robbed? What happened in Survivor 43? And so, I thought it would be so fun to go and take a look back at everything that we saw in Survivor 43. And I can tell you that I have a completely different understanding of Survivor 43. And while I am not here to uh, pronounce Gabler as an all-time player of Survivor or even one of the greatest winners of all time, I think that Gabler had a really fundamental understanding of what it took to win this specific season and had a really interesting plan that I think he executed on to get there. And so I really wanted to go through, this is part strategy, also part post-mortem edit analysis of what did the editors give us in terms of the story of Gabler? Because I think it's just a fascinating one to go back and look at here. And so we've got uh, a bunch of stuff. I've got so many notes. I've been uh, you know, typing away for the last couple of days as I've gone back. I've transcribed a lot of that. I really was back in my TEOS bag uh, to uh, really go through all this. I had a lot of fun working on this. And so I think that you are in for a very interesting ride here talking about all things Gabler. Uh, and so... Why don't we just uh, go back to uh, take a look at where things all began. And back on day one, episode one of Survivor 43, Live In. Of course, uh, this is an episode which features so much Gabler. I think it was a two-hour premiere, and he got so much attention in the start of the season. Uh, going back and re-watching some of this, you know, Cody does tell us in the very first episode that he already spent part of the million, uh, which I, I feel like that might make what happened to him feel a little bit worse uh, since he might have already been in debt from spending part of the million. But anyway, so one of the things that's super interesting, and I, I've done this a lot because I do interviews with the different players after the season. I will have interviews with the Survivor 43 players coming up here in this Survivor postseason. And I feel like that in the modern era, especially, you know, they you, you hear something from every single one of the players on the boat ride in to the Survivor game. Gabler does not get a little confessional on the way in on the boat. Very, very rare. I can't even remember the last time that our winner of the season doesn't get anything. Uh, the first time that Gabler does get to talk is when he gets onto uh, the uh, the mat chat uh, that Jeff asked a question like, uh, all right, you guy down there, uh, when did you start watching Survivor? And he tells a story about how he's been watching since the very beginning, uh, since before his children were hatched. Uh, that's when uh, he started watching Survivor. So we get to the beach, day one of episode one, okay? Uh, Gabler is very excited to be there. He says, it's a beautiful group of people. It's a very positive tribe. He tells us, being older, I'm on the outside. I'm the oldest guy out here, 20, 30 years older than my teammates. I have to be careful with how I start my gameplay, okay? Uh, so that's where he comes in uh, saying, savvy or sweat, uh, Gabler is an advocate for savvy. He says, hey, let's use our brains. Uh, we're a smart group. We see Gabler working on the shelter with Owen. Uh, and Owen pulls Gabler aside for a conversation. And Owen is going to, you know, say to Gabler, hey, you know, if you do anything, if you hear my name, anything, Gabler will give Owen nothing. Uh, so, uh, like, Owen's like, hey, let's, let's try to, he's trying to throw something out there. And instead, Gabler says, well, 
you know, my number one rule for tribal council is don't, I'm not going to do Gabler voice. Uh, that my I will not be able to get through this if I try to do a Gabler impression the whole way through. Maybe, maybe for certain moments as we go through, maybe, maybe I'll I'll, I'll dabble. Uh, but Gabler tells Owen, you know, the number one rule of tribal council is don't go. That's Gabler's thoughts on the premier tribal council. Um, Gabler is working on the fire on day one. And there's a few different times when Gabler is involved with the fire in the early going of this season. And interestingly enough, the man that will break the record for the fastest fire making ever at the final four, he can't get the fire going. Interestingly, um, he's talking about how there's too much humidity. He's doing the striker, can't get it going. Uh, Sammy takes over. Sammy's able to get right in there. Boom, Sammy starts the fire. Interestingly, you know, I uh, listen, I read an interview, actually, that Dalton Ross did with Gabler after he won the show. And Gabler sort of says that he was trying to, like, he didn't want to show people early on that he uh, knew how to make the fire. He says that he actually made an adjustment also of having the striker closer to the fire, that the fires that he's made in like, not Fiji, uh, it's less humid. You can do the striker from further back. Sammy gets right in there. I wonder if that's a little bit of a fire-making lesson that Gabler picks up from Sammy. So after the fire gets made, you know, Gabler is telling us that, you know, this isn't the start that he envisioned. Uh, he's worried he's going to be an easy target. So he needs to connect with the tribe. And so this is when we first see Gabler walk off with Ellie. And of course, you know, Gabler, he's a rocker. He's got all these tattoos. I think that that would be a fascinating podcast to do. I used to talk about this with Denise Stapley sometimes about the idea of like a tattoo analysis of what do all the different tattoos mean. I think that that might be also a uh, fun uh, conversation to go through all of the many tattoos of Gabler. But they're talking about these different uh, heavy metal bands. Uh, and Ellie is she's throwing throwing names out there. She's like, oh, Mastodon. And he's like, I love Mastodon. I personally I thought he was a Twitter guy, but no, Mastodon loves Mastodon. Uh, and so that they're talking with Ellie. And so it's so interesting with Ellie. With Owen, he's like, Hey, my rule is don't go to tribal council. He says to Ellie, um, if I hear your name. I'll let you know. That was exactly what Owen asked him. He said, no, no I will die. My rules don't go to tribal council. To Ellie, he says, he gives her exactly what Owen was asking for. Just very funny. Um, Ellie says, I'm not ruling out working with Gabler. She likes Gabler, okay? Uh, she's going to live by Gabler. She's going to die by Gabler in this game. All right, day two, Shipwheel Island, okay? We get the opportunity. The, the boat comes. All right, we need to pick somebody to go to Shipwheel Island. The way that this gets selected is Ellie is administering 43rd finger is it. Everybody's one finger, two finger. I always feel like it's kind of fugazi when people uh, end up doing that. My question, if I had one question to ask Ellie, it would be, did you rig it to get Gabler to go to Shipwheel Island? You know, Ellie, I think, had so many interesting strategic ideas in this game. Or was it just the luck of the draw that Gabler gets selected to go to Shipwheel Island. He goes out there. He meets uh, Dwight and Carla out there. They have to make a group decision, take the time to get to know each other. Uh, they're going to do uh, risk or no risk. Uh, Carla, you know, she's going to play this very tight. Uh, she doesn't want to risk her vote. Gabler says he's thinking pretty big. Uh, and he tells us in confessional, He's trying to signal that he wants to risk it to get everybody to back off. Uh, they play their risk or no risk card. Gabler and Dwight are the only people to risk. And Dwight's like, okay, how should we pick this? Gabler says, I'm going to stick my hand in first, okay? Uh, I think he said age before beauty. And so he sticks his hand in really the opposite, the inverse of what Tyson uh, selects when he gets the chance to pick rocks on Survivor. And so Gabler takes the thing first. They all leave. And so uh, that Gabler says to everybody, hey, see you at the merge. Um, and Carla's like, well, yeah, good luck uh, to you two. One of you just lost your vote and the other one's a big target. Yeah, right. I'll see you at the merge. Uh, ironically, all three of them will end up at the merge. Gabler tells us about going to Shipwell Island and taking the risk. He says he's 51. There's only been one winner over 50. and he knows that he has to take risks in this game. 
So Gabler comes back, says, brings the whole Baca tribe in. Hey, Baca, get in here. I got to tell you what's going on. Um, and he says he had the chance. He has the thing. He's going to go open it. Okay, let's roll. All right. And so uh, that he ends up doing, he gets it. He does like a Gabler howl, uh, like, hoo, hoo! like um, it's like looking like a wolf thing. Uh, more on that later. Um, he has the thing. All right. So now everybody knows Gabler has the immunity idol. He reads it to himself. Uh, this will keep you safe the next uh, two tribal councils. Gabler tells us in confessional, you know, most people think you get the idol, you bury it, you hide it, you lie about it, as you probably can figure out by now. I go to the beat of my own drum by letting them see the idol. It builds goodwill and trust. Trust is the name of the game out here. So interesting that Gabler is onto this here in episode number one. Trust is going to be such a big part of the uh, Survivor 43 journey of these players. We're going to talk a lot about the social contract uh, that was happening in the season 43 uh, tribal councils. It comes up a lot. Gabler is not the person who makes up this rule, but it happens to be the characteristic that uh, a lot of the players, a lot of the power players, and a lot of the jurors are going to value more than almost any other trait, the ability of how trustworthy were you? And it's something that Gabler does especially well in this game is that he always comes across as very trustworthy to most of the players, most of the time, most of the time. So Gabler's game is really like built on, you know, really establishing these trust bonds with players. And it just happens to be a skill set that's incredibly valued in this specific season of Survivor. So the first challenge ends up happening. Uh, it ends on a table maze. Gabler and Sammy are doing the table maze. Uh, it is not going great. Sammy is getting frustrated with Gabler. He says that Gabler is fighting him after the challenge. They come back. All right. Gabler is, you know, really, you know, feeling not great about it. And so he uh, talks about how tribal councils is just a few hours away. Uh, he says that, you know, um, you know, he's very emotional about it. Okay. Uh, he talks to everybody back at camp. Okay. And Sammy tells us in a confessional after the challenge, you know, we haven't even talked about strategy yet here in this group. Gabler. He says that the losing was excruciating in confessional. Uh, he compares it to being more intense than being in the operating room, okay? Uh, he tells the group, hey, a couple of things here. I came out here with three goals. One was to learn about myself through hardship. Secondly, I came out here to play a great game, which to date, we have all played an amazing game. <laughs> okay, all right, it's day three. Uh, you're going to tribal council, but okay. And he says, and lastly, I wanted to win an immunity idol, which I did. So Gabler, he's ready to de declare victory on day three. He's like, uh, so that's freaking huge. It's amazing. Uh, being that said, I'm not going to hide behind my immunity idol. I don't want to take the easy road out. So tonight, I'm going to take a shot in the dark. People are like, what? Uh, I'm going to throw the shot in the dark, and we're just going to see where it's at. Cool. And I think for, for Gabler, you, what's interesting to Gabler is like how much, you know, he, we know how much Gabler honors and respects service people. And I, and I really do think that Gabler, I think, was going to really struggle with the tribe part of the game because I think that he looks looks at his tribe as, you know, his b battalion, you know, these are his fellow soldiers. I, I think that the, like, had Gabler had to go to a lot of uh, pre-merge tribal councils, especially, like, had everything not happened the way it happened with Ellie and with Janine, I, I really do think that he was going to have a major struggle with voting against people from his tribe. I think he was really looking at it. And I think that rather than, hey, I, I'm here with all these people, this is my team, I can't go against them. I, I think that he saw like the only way out of this was, hey, I have to put my own name out there and I would rather not write down a name of anybody in this group than be forced to, you know, be part of destroying this team in the early going. And so he tells us, you know, everybody at home is going to have a hard time understanding why I wouldn't automatically play my immunity idol 
but I was part of the loss and therefore I'm playing my shot in my dark because I should be at risk tonight. And Ellie's like, what are you doing? Um, she says, let's, let's put that in the parking lot. She says, let's, let's look at our fire. Let's see if we, there's something there. Let's, let's marinate on this. Okay. Um, she says, okay. I, I'm, I, she tells us in confessional, she's not interested in voting out Gabler. Uh, she works, she's going to talk him out of it. Okay. Now it's a mad dash. And so Ellie and Janine, they're talking to Owen. They're throwing out Mariah's name. We see Mariah talking with Sammy. They're throwing out Owen's name. Mariah says it's too risky to vote out Gabler potentially in this spot. And so Janine tells Ellie, she is concerned, Ellie. Um, you know, we are giving the men a, a, a majority against the women. Uh, and Ellie does say, you know, I could be setting something into motion here uh, where they could have an easy majority. And and and, and that is uh, kind of exactly what ha would happen uh, as uh, they all going to vote out Mariah at the tribal council. You know, this is the only time Gabler is going to go to tribal council in the pre-merge. Uh, Jeff is like pretty incredulous during this first tribal council. Um, Sammy talks about how, hey, this was supposed to be the final six. And Jeff's like, the, the final six? What are you talking about? Um, you know, that they're talking about this is like a kumbaya tribe. Jeff, like, seems sort of frustrated about this whole situation. And Gabler says, no, no, this was important that we got to know everybody. He says that we were supposed to win today. Um, and Jeff's like, how? I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get it. But in hindsight, what's really interesting to me is Mariah in this game, she comes in, she's like, hey, I am here to make friends. You know, her and Gabler in like looking back actually like had a, a much closer sort of worldview about how they looked at Survivor. Like they were a much better match to be allies than a player like Ellie and Gabler ever were. Ellie was such a, a strategist and, uh, you know, willing to sort of like, uh, like backstab and lie about things that were happening in the game. Like she was really willing to play very hard where Mariah was somebody who wanted to come in and build a, a game around friendships and around relationships. And it would have been interesting to see like in an alternate universe, if Gabler and Mariah could have potentially paired up. I just think that they like had a lot more similar views on the game. Ultimately, uh, Mariah is going to be the person uh, to get voted out here. And so Mariah becomes the first person voted out of the Baca tribe. And that's going to be it for pre-merge tribal councils for Gabler. But there's still a lot more Gabler that goes on in the merge. Okay, episode two starts off. Okay, it's night three after tribal. Owen, he brings everybody in. He says, hey, I'm sorry, everybody. I was anxious about, you know, my, I was concerned about my name getting written down. Ellie is feeling like, okay, I hope that this was going to like solidify trust. Uh, and Gabler mentions that he, you know, hey, look, I trusted you all not to play my idol. And Gabler says that up until now, they worked on the relationships, but now he thinks he needs to start taking care of their bodies. They need to really work on food. He mentions that tomorrow they should look for worms and fry them up to be survivor bacon. Okay, Gabler. Um, I don't know if anybody ever jumped on that, but so Gabler is going to start to uh, physically deteriorate. Again, busy first three days for Gabler. And so now he's he's not doing great uh, physically uh, these next uh, couple of days. There's a really bad storm. It seems to hit him the hardest. Uh, they got rained on. Their fire is out. Gabler says they weren't prepared for the storm. He says uh, the game is blowing his mind. He's talking about how he's close to puking. Owen is getting very worried about him. Uh, Owen says that Gabler is 20 to 30 years older than everybody. Uh, and Gabler is, is very concerned. He needs to rest. He is like really worn down. And while, yeah, resting is going to physically help him, he's also like very aware that it is hurting him in the game. Owen he is the junior deputy water boy. He's getting water for everybody, trying to like nurse Gabler back to health. Uh, and we see where Janine and Ellie are, are bonding. Uh, the guys are also having a conversation. Sammy is the one that throws out, hey, you know, look, that Janine and Ellie, you know, they're they're tight. I, I think it should be 
one, two, three. He says, I don't, I didn't really want to do the guys thing, but the guys are, this is the best way to go. Gabler uh, says that he's on board with this. Sam says the guys are being underestimated by Janine and Ellie. And he might be correct about that. Um, day five, Baca wins immunity. They bounce back. Uh, they get a bunch of fishing gear. And uh, this is interesting. Gabler, uh, he is going to be the person who is going to take on potentially going spear fishing over at Baca. We're going to see Ellie. Ellie kind of micromanages Gabler a little bit. Uh, she says that um, Gabler needs to tie a rope to the Hawaiian sling because she is concerned Gabler is going to launch the Hawaiian sling into the ocean. And yes, we, we like as survivor viewers, uh, we have seen this happen before. Okay. <laughs> this does, this is a thing that, that, that does happen. That being said, I don't think tying another rope to the Hawaiian sling is the way to not do that. Uh, and maybe Ellie's concerns were founded because we see Gabler like messing around with the Hawaiian sling and it's not, it's not going great. Okay. Uh, but anyway, Gabler is going to go take the Hawaiian sling. He goes off into the ocean after the challenge here on day five. And so there's some talk. Uh, Ellie and Janine are talking about that they don't know about the advantage that he has. Is it the first two tribals in the game? Or is it the first two tribals that Gabler attends? Owen is actually very confident. No, it's the first two tribals of the game. I'm 95% I'm, I'm sure. So they're going to go back and they're going to go into Gabler's bag. Okay, this is going to set a lot of things into motion. Uh, Gabler actually comes back to the camp. Uh, that Janine is able to, before Gabler sees, read that it is Gabler's first two tribal councils, not the first two tribal councils of the game. Ellie says this is her worst fear. Uh, we have to figure out a way that uh, to get around this because Gabler's idol works. We can't just vote out Gabler the next time we go to a tribal council. All right. The third episode, episode three, it's day six. Gabler has slept on the beach because uh, the bed is not doing great. Uh, you know, Gabler, he's still a little bit of an outsider. He's still not doing great. Um, that they're concerned. Owen calls him unhinged because he's not eating and drinking. Ellie says that they're babying him. Okay, Gabler says he needs to go into full-on hibernation mode. Uh, that's that's bad. That I think that's on the... Is that hibernation mode? That's like uh, one step down, I think, from goblin mode. Ellie... Uh, she says she wants Gabler out next. And so she is going to, and this is one of the, you know, uh, big mistakes that Ellie and Janine make. They're going to include Sammy on a lot of these conversations. Um, and Sammy is telling them, boy, I really hate that Gabler's idol still works. It's unclear. We don't really get a confessional if this is actually how Sammy feels or if he's just trying to milk uh, Ellie and Janine for some information um, and they're talking about like, well, maybe we can just ask Gabler if he thinks that it's actually still valid or not. And so um, they're they're talking a little bit about who should be the person to ask Gabler this question about, hey, how do you feel now that your idol is um, is not working? And so Janine says Ellie should be the one to do this. Uh, Sammy's like, oh, really? You think you think that? Um, Ellie is closer to Gabler than I am. Okay. Uh, Sammy, this really uh, pisses off Sam uh, because he doesn't like being underestimated. Both Gabler and Sammy really don't like it. And, and Gabler and Sammy are such an interesting duo in this season. And we'll talk about this more in the post-merge that the, Gabler and Sammy are really polar opposites of each other, even though that they are allies and they get along great, but they're really like kind of opposites. We have that in Sammy, the youngest player in the game, and Gabler, the oldest player in the game. But the one thing that they both share is that they both really get uh, very insulted about being underestimated. And so that they, uh, Sammy ends up sitting down with Gabler. Uh, and so uh, that Sammy's asking, hey, can you use your idol, your idol still? And uh, Gabler says, yeah, of course I can. Like, like Gabler doesn't know the rules of his own idol. And so uh, Sammy basically spills the beans. Hey, they, they looked in your bag. Gabler is pissed. He says he trusted Ellie, but now for sure, he knows she's a double agent. He says she's next. For sure. He would be, I mean, of the Baca people. That is correct. Okay. So now the guys talk. Owen, Sammy, Gabler have a conversation. It was on day six. Uh, and so 
Gabler knows about that they went through the bag. And Owen is surprised. And Owen, he's kind of like playing in the middle here. He's uh, in these conversations with the guys, but he also was there with the women when they were talking about the plan to go into Gabler's bag. Um, Gabler says, hey, they think I'm a little slow. That's fine. He says in confessional, the fact that they're underestimating me is great. I mean, I work in an operating room and I do super specialized trans catheter valve surgery. So I, I may not be a genius, but I'm not a dummy either. But if she wants me to play a dummy, I'll play a dummy. And this was something that Gabler really does work well uh, with throughout the season. There's a long history of players in Survivor who sort of like play on the, you know, I'm older, I'm from the South, you know, uh, lots of different things that uh, people, uh, whether it's JT, Big Tom, Roger Bingham, lo lo lots of players have been able to, uh, you know, um, uh, Elaine in uh, Survivor 39. A lot of players have been like, hey, I'm, I guess I'm just dumb. Uh, and they let players take advantage of them to their own detriment. And Gabler is very willing to do this. Uh, we, we have a moment then where Ellie is now feeling like good about her plan, about how they're going to they're gonna trick Gabler. She brings up the idea of making a fake idol. Uh, let's have a fake idol making day. Why not? Um, and Gabler is like, well, you know, I, I, I kind of want to bring it uh, home to my daughter. Um, and he says that he's going to get the last laugh on this. And it's going to be very satisfying. And again, the, he is calling his shot. That is that is true. Um, Owen and Gabler talk about how Ellie bought, bought it. Uh, she thought she was being slick. He says, I can play the hillbilly to Owen. I can do it all day long. He tells us in a confessional. I can be cool hand Luke taking it easy the whole time, whole time. And I will surprise her at tribal big time. We got to get her out. So Gabler has his eyes set on Ellie. And I do think that this is a thing that does help him. I was talking about how I thought that Gabler really would struggle in the team part of the game. I think that it is against every part of Gabler's nature to have to like have infighting within a team. But that Ellie like really like gave him permission to, okay, I have somebody that I'm going to target and I am going to work towards getting out of the game. And I think that that like that block that I feel like that he had, that he was able to work past that because that he found out that Ellie and Janine were like so blatantly trying to target him. Uh, Baca wins immunity at the uh, third uh, immunity challenge. No tribal for them. It's day eight, okay? People are sleeping. <laughs> Gabler goes and gets some palm fronds, okay? Ellie is sleeping. Sammy is sleeping. He goes and he starts to, he's going to start to lay palm fronds on sleeping people. Sleeping Sammy wakes up. He's like, did this, did this fall on me? Um, he says to Ellie, I'm going to get one for you next. She's like, no, no, I'm good. I'm good. I don't, I don't, I don't want a palm fronds. He's like, there's no ants on it. There's no ants. Why wouldn't why wouldn't you want the a palm frond on on you? There's no ants on it. And uh Sammy tells us and Sammy who is like Gabler's closest ally. He's like this is Gabler. This is Mike Gabler personified. Sometimes he's not aware. And Gabler is such an interesting person on Survivor. There's such a dichotomy. He seemingly at times has very little self-awareness. He does not know about how he's coming across uh, to people. Other times, he's hyper aware of how that he is coming across in the game. I do think that the thing that this illustrates, and we talked a lot about in the real time about how, oh, this is a very bad social move. I do think it speaks to Gabler's heart. And, and I do think that Gabler views himself as a caretaker of the other players in the game. And, and I do think that he does have a big heart in terms of how much he cares for the people that he's out there with. And I think that he made some real bonds with the other players. And he is a dad. We hear about his daughters. And I do think that, you know, like I think his heart is in the right place. Um, but people do not want palm fronds on them. Really, at, at any time. Uh, when you're sleeping or awake. I cannot think of the situation that you would want Palm fronds on, even if it was raining, uh, it's really it, it does it doesn't do a lot. So um, that Gabler is curious. Were were the palm fronds at all helpful? No, 
No, actually, they were not. <laughs> not really, Gabler. Okay. So another time we're seeing now Ellie micromanaging Gabler. Okay. They and Ellie and Gabler get into like a little bit of a fight. Like on a scale of one to ten, it's like a three. Uh, but Ellie is like, you know what, Gabler? You're making the fire all wrong. We need some smaller sticks in there. He's like, oh, really? Uh, like, interestingly, the man that will make the fastest fire in the history of the show, uh, he is getting notes on the fire from Ellie. She's like, I'm going to do it myself. She's going She's going to get some uh, small sticks to go fix the fire. Uh, Gabler says uh, he's a strong personality. Ellie's a strong personality. Uh he says, if we get too far with her, we will all regret it. So Gabler has his eyes set on Ellie here, um, you know, all the way back uh, from this point in the game. All right. Uh, day eight, there's a camp raid. Baca is expecting uh, for uh, Vessi to come raid their camp. They have the fishing gear. Somehow they go to Coco because Coco has the most people. So uh, not a lot of Baca here. At the immunity challenge, also in this same episode, uh, episode four, we're going to see where Baca is struggling in the immunity challenge, uh, that there is like a little bit of like a bromance uh, brewing with Sammy uh, and Owen and with Dwight. Uh, they're going to get help from Vessi, and then they also are able to avoid the tribal council again in episode number four. Okay, episode five, it's day 10. All right, uh, Janine and Ellie have found the beware advantage. Janine opens it. They said they're not going to tell anybody about it, okay? Owen walks up. Owen is in on this. You know, Owen was in an interesting uh, position, and I was talking about this on one of the podcasts, like where where did Owen go wrong? And I think that Owen really did try to ride the middle of the Baca tribe with, you know, Jan you know Janine and Ellie on the one side, who did seem like that they were probably like the more rational players. And then you had, you know, Sammy and Gabler, a little bit of like the odd couple, the oldest and the youngest. And they were probably a little bit more unpredictable. I do think that the game ends up going a lot differently for Owen. Again, it's oops all Gabler. I know. Uh, I just feel like that going back that, you know, Owen really tries to play the middle of Baca. And I kind of feel like that if he ultimately goes with the guys, I think then he ultimately isn't left out of that first vote at the merge. And I think that Owen's trajectory ends up going in a completely different direction. But Janine has the beware advantage, okay? And so she needs to get the beads. Ellie tells Sammy about, oh, okay. You know, again, once again, another big mistake on Ellie's part to trust Sammy with this information about the beads. And so... Everybody knows what Janine is doing except for Gabler. Janine needs Gabler's beads. He gives her a couple of green beads. He says, here's some green Gabler beads. She's like, oh, but I actually really need that yellow bead. And he says he was going to give it to his daughter. Uh, instead, that they, she trades it back. She gets the thing. And Gabler sits with Sammy. And then Sammy tells him, yo, hey, uh, guess what? Those beads were an idol. And uh, Gabler's like, oh, uh, she's just got a fake idol? Like, no, that was a real idol. Gabler's like, you swear. Oh, uh, and Gabler can't believe it. He tells, he does a confessional. He says, now the game has changed dramatically. Not in our favor. Janine is now protected and Janine could give her idol to Ellie. He does, he's very worried. He does not care for Ellie. Uh, there's many ways this could explode on us. It went from being a much simpler game to a very complicated game by me handing a bead to my friend. She got me. I'll say that she got me. And again, for Gabler, I feel like that when you take advantage of his friendship, I, I do feel like that it's it, it is a real insult to him. Like he he doesn't take that lightly. Uh, lightly, that he really I, I think puts honor above um, many other things in the game more so than most Survivor players, and so to get kind of betrayed by Janine in a way that was kind of outside the game of like, Hey, can I have a thing to, you know, think of you outside the game? Like, I think he thought they were having a real human moment. And then to find out that actually, no, she was playing you again. Uh, you know, Gabler's had it with these two. Uh, Janine is going to go to Shipwheel Island. Uh, she gets picked to go there after the challenge. She's going to uh, risk her vote along with uh, Jesse. 
uh, along with uh, Jane. I'm sorry, I was, I was along with Geo. I'm sorry, uh, who gets the knowledge is power. Ultimately, Geo is going to, uh, you know, get voted out of the game. Janine comes back. Uh, she says she can't cast a vote. Okay, let's go to episode six for what's going on here at Baca. It's day 12. Okay, it's mergatory. Big Gabler episode coming up. Okay, everybody shows up at Baca Beach. And so everybody is talking. We don't really see a lot of Gabler bonding with the other players, but we're going to go to our challenge, split into two groups. Gabler is on the group that wins immunity. He goes off to the merge feast. Carla, uh, she says, who wants a beer? Gabler, he would like a beer. All right. So everybody's talking. Carla says, let's talk. Ryan says, hey, uh, why don't we be the final seven? And Carla's like, uh, I don't know. Janine gives us a confessional. She says, uh, get lost. All right. They got, start talking about who Who do you all want to keep? Noel says, uh, oh, I'd like to keep Cody. Uh, Gabriel says, well, I'd like to keep Owen and Sammy. And Janine says, I, I'd like to keep Ellie. And Gabler <laughs> says, Ellie went through my bag on day three. So that's something for me that I remember. Um, in fairness, it was day five. Okay. Um, but, you know, the the hurt, the, the pain is still there for Gabler. It's a fresh wound. Uh, Janine says, my jaw dropped when Gabler says that, which we know this is a thing that does happen to Janine. Her jaw does drop. That is, that is the thing. Gabler does a confessional. He says, Everybody was fractured. They need something to go for. And by throwing out Ellie's name, I was trying to throw out Ellie's name. He says, he goes on, the trust has been broken with me and Ellie since day three. It was really day five. Uh, so right now, I'm targeting enemies that I know are plotting against me. And if I can do that with people, then we build a little bit more trust together. Because if we're going to vote Ellie out today, it, it, it's today. I want to look like I'm decisive and trustworthy. I think it's really important for me to not just talk the talk, but walk the walk. And I'm walking that walk tonight. And I do think that this was such an important part of why Gabler was successful in the game. When Gabler told you he was going to do something, he was going to do it. Gabler was not often, if ever, telling you to do something. But he was a reliable number. And if you told him, do this, uh, that he more often than not was going to do it, and if he was not going to do it, it usually meant that you were the person who was going home. So he knew when to cut bait on people. So he was that person who did what he said he was going to do and did not come across as ever being schemy. The one vote that he controlled, it was not schemy. It was not secretive. He blurted out. He didn't he he wasn't like going around and like like playing both sides. He 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 came out and and said to everyone, "This is the person I want to vote out of the game. And ultimately, that's what happened. They go back from that merge feast. And Dwight tells Ellie about what Gabler said. Again, Dwight's been working very hard at getting the Baca and Vessi thing going on. There's a great back and forth between Ellie and Gabler. Ellie says that, um, hey, why are you telling people I went through your bag? Uh, and Gabler says that Owen and Sammy said that, they saw you looking through my bag with Janine. She's like, well, it's not true. Why would you throw me under the bus? He says, well, you've been throwing me under the bus too. She says, I have not. That's the thing, Gabler. I'm not playing like that. He's like, well, somebody went through my bag. Was it Janine? Who was it? She's like, I'm not going to do that, okay? I'm not, I'm not like that. He's like, well, it's important for you to do that. She's like, I'm not like that. He's like, well, I got to assume you guys are together. She's like, of course. Janine is my best friend. He's like, does Janine have the hidden immunity idol? Did she find something? Yes. But nobody told me, right? It's like, why would I tell you somebody else's business, Gabler? I'm not going to tell your business. He's like, am I your ally or am I not your ally? I feel like you have turned on me. It's like, all right, well, it's not true. I want to say Baca strong. I haven't faltered. He's like, well, then you should have shared information with me when you could have and brought me in and kept me in the loop. 
Uh, and Ellie says, well, now I have to go talk to people because you have put me on the chopping block and I have to deal with that. And Gabler says, I, I, I don't know that that was me. She's like, no, it was you. <laughs> you know, Gabler doesn't tell a lot of lies when he does drop one there of like, I don't know if it was me that did that. Like, no, no, it was. <laughs> we do, we do have on good authority that, that that was you that did do that, Gabler. Ellie goes to work. She's talking to Owen. She's talking to Sammy. Um, they want to vote for James. Uh, and Sammy is annoyed. Uh, again, I don't think that Sammy is annoyed about getting Gabler out of the game, but this is not how Sammy wants to operate. Uh, you know, Gabler is like much more out in the open about this. This is not how Sammy necessarily wants to do things. A couple of times he says that, you know, this is like, uh, you know, what is Gabler doing? Uh, Gabler, he confronts Janine in front of Ryan. He's like, uh, he's like, I know you and Ellie are sisters. And he starts talking about the idol. And Janine's like, oh, can we can we do this in private? Uh, and so uh, Gabler is uh, not helping out Janine or Ellie in any way. There's a Baca meeting. Everybody is, they're trying to get, Owen's trying to get everybody back on the same page. Um, Gabler's still, I don't know if I could trust Ellie. Sammy's like, Gabler, calm down, calm down. Um, Janine is telling Gabler, we are going to vote for James. Vote for James tonight. Gabler has a confessional. He says, you know, Janine is really scrambling to try and get me on board, but it's too little too late. We're still not Baca strong. We're Baca S-word show. These people think that they've got me fooled, but I know what's going on here. I'm being played. So I'm going to vote Ellie tonight, and that's it. Okay? So... Uh, Gabler has his mind made up. Uh, it's kind of a foregone conclusion that Ellie is going to be uh, the person voted out at the tribal council. There was some, you know, I guess in the edit, uh, some question of whether or not, will Janine play her idol? We see a scene with Janine and Ellie talking right before tribal council. Um, at tribal council, Gabler says, everything has exploded. He's not stopped talking all day. Uh, Ellie talks about how her name has bubbled to the surface. Owen is the person that first mentions at one of these tribal councils. He says, you know, trust is the only currency out here. Trust is such a big part of Survivor 43, uh, more so than any other season I can remember. Like, there's just so much talk about, you know, who who we can count on, who we can trust. Um, Jeff says, uh, brings up advantages. And there's some talk about, you know, uh, Gabler mentions, you know, if you play your idols wrong, uh, you know, you, you have wonderful jewelry to go home with. Sammy is also like trying to talk Janine out of playing in the idol. He says like, if you play your idol the wrong way, it proves that you don't trust people. It's time to vote. Uh, Ellie watches and she's the person that gets voted out. And then Ellie is, uh, once she learns that she is the person voted out, she leaves us with some parting words. She ends up saying, see what trusting Gabler will get you. Ooh. Right back at you. So great in hindsight. Y'all see what trusting Gabler will get you. And you know that she should have listened to Ellie um, is uh, ironically, you know, um, you know, trusting Gabler actually was a good thing for most of them. But, you know, in, in, in hindsight, you know, he is going to be the person who wins the game. So, you know, it's not like Ellie didn't try to warn them. OK, but for us. In the real world, okay, we are seeing everything that happened. All right, at, at this point, I think we all felt like, all right, Gabler, no chance to win the game, maybe zero vote finalist at best. It's it's this is this is not our winner of the season. And there's been a lot here. I believe that Gabler has one of the best halftime adjustments in the history of Survivor. And we are literally at halftime. Uh, that's one of the good things about the 26 day game. You do have uh, a clear first half and second half, unlike uh, the middle of uh, the 17th and a half day at noon of the, uh, my math is wrong, 18 and a half day um, on Survivor. Um, is that still right? 19th and a half day. Uh, if we're gonna, you know, like we're, we're loosey goosey here. We're not, nobody said we were gonna do math. So this episode number seven is called Bull in a China Shop, okay? Uh, and again, that bull in the China shop uh, that the episode is named after is Owen referring to Gabler from Owen's perspective. He was talking to Dwight. They were trying to 
keep the five alive. And of course, uh, he says, but freaking Gabler, he's like a bull in a china shop. Uh, we see Gabler talking with Cody. Gabler and Cody, it, it is not like expressly in the show, but in sort of like the little bit that we see in the exit interviews, you know, I, I think that, that Gabler and Cody really had a bond. Uh, Gabler talks to Cody, talking about Ellie. Uh, he says that, you know, she was a dangerous player. Uh, and, and Cody's like, yeah, yeah, you got to do it. You got to do it. Um, and Gabler says that in the confessional, he says, Last night, I didn't play my idol. I didn't have to. And now it's expired. On top of that, the plan I hatched that I wanted to have happen, happened. Allie Gabler kind of came up to the surface, came over there. I didn't trust Ellie. We took her out. Now, I plan to go underwater again and just chill. And then pop back up so I'm not perceived as a threat. But when the time is right, I'm ready to strike. And, you know, for Gabler, like, did, did he dictate the season? No. Like, was, was, was this his blueprint of, of, like, what? He was not calling the shots in any way, shape, or form. But he, he does call his shot in terms of, this is exactly what I am going to do. And, and he sticks to it. And the game comes to him in a way where it breaks in, in a way where he's able to really benefit from this. But he comes up with this idea of the, the, the Alec Gabler of exactly how to do this. And he is go, it, it is going to work out perfectly for him. And he is going for a guy who was sloppy, clumsy, undisciplined in the first half of the game he really is going to be able to stick to this plan. He'll, he'll say later on in the season, say, I say we stick to the plan. And he is very much able to stick to this alligator, alligator mentality. All right. So we have the immunity challenge here. Everybody get into pairs, draw partners. All right. Uh, we ends up with Gabler and Owen, their pairs. They get to the end. They're going up against Cody and Dwight. And of course, this is now the challenge where Gabler is going to hold on. And of course, you know, this was uh, one of the you know iconic moments of the season. And so Jeff asks uh, Gabler, you know, what do you what are you uh, digging? Like, how, how are you digging in, Gabler? And Gabler mentions, uh, yeah, my uncle, he had heart surgery uh, with the people I work with. This next minute is for Neil. OK. Um, and then he mentioned, and everybody's like, uh, oh, uh, like, oh, and what are you doing it for? What are you doing for? And like, it was almost like a light bulb goes off. He's like, uh, he's like, yeah. And you know what? This next minute's for Noel. Noel, she got caught up in the net in this challenge. 23 minutes pass. Gabler, he's starting to get like some superpowers and he is like getting a renewed strength. Co like Cody is fading. Owen is fading. Dwight is out at this point. He's I could do this all day. His bucket drops back. He's going to wind it back up. Owen tries to keep up with him. Oh, Owen can't do it. All right. He's he's out. It's Gabler versus Cody. They go on. They're going to break the record uh, for this challenge for 25 minutes. Gabler says, I've been married 25 years. Let's get to 25. Jeff says, all right, Gabler is working it uh, and it's helping. So now, now Gabler, he's like, he has gained like some superhuman strength by like he's channeling this idea of that he is doing this for others and i really think that this is like another place where gabler is able to sort of like draw on this like superhuman strength in these moments when he's playing for something that's bigger than him uh, and he becomes kind of unstoppable in these moments. He talks about Lester Tenney, one of his patients, the war hero, survived the bat, uh, the Baton Death March. Tells the story about how he got to know Lester for six years. He says, "I could do this all day for Lester. A lot of heroes served in our military. We do this for fun. They did this for real." Uh, and now it's like he's holding the thing with one hand. He's talking to Cody. It's like he's 32 minutes in. Uh, it's amazing. And he's drawing on this uh, strength 
from all these people. He's talking, this one, this minute's for my dog, my furry face son. This one's for Idaho. This one's for Alaska. This minute's for my naval bud, naval Navy SEAL buddies. I went to high school with them. Uh, this one's for my old roommate, Muzzy. And again, like his thing falls down. He's like, oh, let me wind it back up. Cody, he tries to just like Owen and then his thing falls down. Um, and Gabler, he's a guy where, you know, uh, I, I guess, you know, he, he I, I think he's somebody also where, you know, he's just had the merge feast. Like he has like very like highs and lows in terms of like his energy levels in the game. This is a point where he had like very high energy, but he really is able to draw on the inspiration. Again, this becomes like even more meaningful when we know that he's actually playing the game for other people where he is like going to donate the entire prize to uh to veterans uh a very selfless act and i think that this was another area that gabler was able to draw strength from of hey i'm doing this for a reason bigger than myself and so um jeff is so impressed he says oh what an effort uh gabler stands up he's looking strong uh jeff puts the necklace on him and so uh, Gabler wins immunity. He tells us, uh, I didn't know I can do that. All I could say is if you even think for a second you want to do this, uh, do it. You'll find power in yourself. Do it. Survivor loves stuff like that. Okay. So Gabler now, he's immune from the vote. I, I do think like um, as I was going back through this and thinking this through, in the real time, it didn't really, um, you know, have a light bulb go off for me. But I do wonder, you know, going back to the Ali Gabler thing, Gabler is so visible at the Ellie vote that, you know, he is, he talks about, oh, my profile is so huge right now. I do think it was a big deal for him to win this immunity challenge where his name was not even allowed to come up as a suggestion for people. Because, you know, we see it all the time in Survivor and especially in Big Brother where he easily could have been the decoy vote at this vote. And this is going to be the tribal council where Dwight goes home. But it easily could have been a situation where, okay, for whoever, like whoever is they're going for, they're saying, okay, uh, we're voting for Gabler tonight. But because that he wins immunity at this tribal council, he's able to keep his name out of there from being, because then once it happens once, it's totally like an acceptable thing of, yeah, oh yeah, we're going for Romeo tonight. You know, Romeo, uh, like write down Romeo, that's the plan. Uh, and then like over and over and over again, that your name is the decoy thing. But he had the high profile, but then he wins the immunity. Uh, so there's two votes in a row now where you couldn't write Gabler's name down. And I think that was a really big thing for a person that comes into the merge at the bottom for Gabler to be able to avoid getting caught up uh, in that like, uh, you know, death spiral of being the, the decoy vote. All right. So back at camp. Uh, Gabler's hugging everybody. He tells Dwight that this was like therapy for him. Uh, and we get a little bit of Gabler's backstory, which I do think ends up being important based on what ultimately ends up happening with Gabler and what he wants to do with this, uh, with, with his, uh, winnings. He says in that challenge, I was so inspired by the people I was channeling because I'm playing for veterans who are suffering from traumatic brain injuries, who are suffering from PTSD. We start to see flashbacks of the uniforms. Uh, veteran community has been very special to me all my life. My dad served and my uncle, so I have a military background. And up until recently, PTSD uh, was something that just came from the battlefield. But trauma is trauma. PTSD rings true with me because I work in the operating room. I've been in thousands of cases. However, sometimes... Things go wrong when there's a patient on the table, somebody's grandfather, somebody you know, their son. So there are cases that were 17 years ago that I carry with me today. Veterans, they're 1% of our population that takes care of 99%. So if I can give 100% for them, then I'll be, I'll be very proud and happy about that. Um, I said this before with the Palm Frowns. Gabler is a caretaker uh, that he uses it to push him. Uh, and I think it is something that makes the people that are around him also have very warm feelings uh, about him. Um, I, I uh, get to, you know, I have in my notes uh, about how Gabler won immunity, uh, but I already talked about that. James, he's going to find the knowledge is power. Okay. Uh, everybody's worried about that. Uh, Jesse and Cody, they're flipping to vote with Coco. Okay. Uh, looks like that Owen and Dwight are putting together this Vessi and Baca alliance. Sammy somehow jumps on board with it's Coco, it's Jesse, it's Cody, 
and Sammy. That's the seven, okay? The seven is going to be very important. Gabler, he's left out of the seven, okay? Sammy, his, his, uh, ma his main buddy, his ally, doesn't even tell him uh, how to vote. Gabler votes wrong on this vote. This is the only time in the season where Gabler is going to be left out of the vote. Uh, Gabler votes for Ryan at this tribal council um, that Gabler is going to talk about in the next episode, but we don't see anything about Gabler voting uh, the wrong way. Not sure if it's because his perspective doesn't matter or uh, this could be a winner edit situation where ultimately we don't want to have our winner uh, you know, highlight them voting the wrong way, but ultimately he votes for Ryan um, and ultimately it's going to be Dwight goes out. Everybody thinks that Dwight goes out with the idol. Episode eight comes. It's day 15, okay? It's called Proposterous, okay? Everybody is talking about Dwight getting voted out. Oh my God, Dwight got voted out. He had the idol for the knowledge is power. Everybody feels like the Baca idol is out of the game. We find out that Jesse has it, okay? Um, there's a lot of talk about food in this episode. We're going to have the rice negotiations, okay? Carla, she's having dreams. Um, Gabler says in confessional, I don't need to eat to win this game. I think that's a luxury. But the wolf pack is hungry. He references the wolf pack to describe the tribe. You hear a couple of times that people do like a howl. I watched Gabler's audition tape recently, and he does like the howl, like this kind of like wolf howl thing, like, ow, like, uh, I can't do it. Um, but then when Gabler won the immunity challenge, I noticed that people were doing it also. He refers to the tribe as the wolf pack. Uh, like, I do think that there were positive feelings towards Gabler that the, that the show, like, didn't necessarily hi uh, highlight where he looks at the tribe as a wolf pack and they're reciprocating, like, the wolf howl uh, back to Gabler. Uh, I think that's an interesting thing. It's not real. It's a little bit of, like, supposition on my part, but I, I feel like that uh, the wolf pack was a little bit of a thing. We see yeah, Gabler, his pants are falling down. He says, I used to have a muffin top coming out here. Didn't need to know that. Uh, Gabler goes fishing with Ryan. He says, everybody is physically depleted. Last night's tribal, I was on the wrong side of the vote. So I'm going to try to spear fish, try to curry favor with everybody. But our biggest food provider, bar none, is Ryan. He loves to do it. He's an absolute physical beast. So Gabler is feeling the pressure here a little bit after being on the wrong side of the numbers, the rice negotiation is going to happen in this episode. In my mind, I think I thought that Gabler was going to be a person who sat out to try to get, because that, that seems like that is in like uh, the spirit of Gabler. Uh, he does not. I, I think he was. This is probably the point in the game where he was the most paranoid about potentially, um, you know, he's he's voted the wrong way. He uh, like has just won an immunity challenge. I, I think that Gabler was pretty scared at this point overall for his game. Cause I think in another situation, I do think that he would have been a person to sit out of the challenge. Um, but he does, he spends time with Ryan. Ryan is spear fishing. Like he's really impressed with Ryan's fishing. He's hearing Ryan out. Ryan is talking about how, you know, I'm worried I could be considered a threat. Gabler, you know, sits and talks that through with him. Um, we have our, uh, our challenge for immunity, uh, Jesse, Carla, Cassidy, Sammy, uh, are the people, all people in the seven end up sitting out of the challenge for rice. Owen, uh, that even though James says, Hey, you're, you're, you're good. Owen wins immunity. And now again, this spells some more trouble for Gabler here in this round where he's probably, I think the most paranoid that he ends up being the whole game. He tells us in confessional Owen won immunity, which puts me, Noel and Janine on the hot seat. I think the majority Alliance smells blood. I'm trying to find safe harbor because as long as my name doesn't hit parchment, I'm moving forward. You know, in my exit interview with Gabler after he won the game, um, we were talking a little bit about his strategy in the game. Uh, he talked about how he had played a first half of the game that was kind of like a Rupert. Uh, and he was very much about like, uh, like honor, and loyalty, integrity. And it wasn't really working for him. He played a second half of the game. He said, like a Sandra, uh, anybody but me. Uh, and he's referred to that as like any threat at any time. And he does, he talks about this idea a lot at this point in the game, safe Harbor. He's not in the seven. He does a great job of making the seven feel like, Hey, I'm with you. Just give me a name. Just give me a name. I'm, I'm with you. You tell me what to do. Use me. I, I'm just, I don't know what, I don't know how to vote. 
Just tell me how to vote so I can get through to the next round. He mentioned safe harbor uh, a lot, and it's going to work. He is not in the seven, and he is going to ingratiate himself in to have like working relationships with a lot of the people who are in the seven. Ryan uh, is going to uh, talk to Gabler. Uh, Ryan is basically like, it should be Janine. Open and shut case. Ryan, he goes out and he's spearfishing. Meanwhile, Sammy is trying to, you know, get do, do Sammy things. He is saying, um, hey, it should be Ryan. He's talking to Carla. Uh, there's some talk. Maybe the, does the seven want to take a shot at Ryan? He's a free agent. He's working with everybody. Ryan's more of a physical threat. What do we need to vote out Janine for? This, this is when Sammy starts getting antsy in the game. And, and we're going to see this over the next couple of rounds. And it's so interesting to compare and contrast Sammy and Gabler because they're so opposites in terms of how they end up approaching the game. Gabler is a person does not get antsy. That you, Gabler is like, tell me the name. I'll go there. I'll write it down. I am never trying to make my own agenda happen in the game. Sammy, he is constantly trying to make his own agenda happen. You know, uh, you you give Sammy a name. Is he going to write it down? Who knows? Uh, it's just like a, like really interesting to have like these two uh, players in the game who are allies, you know, who work together, uh, who are just like so opposite in terms of how they approach the game and really how they're received. You're going to start to hear a lot of like, oh, can we trust Sammy? I don't know what Sammy is doing. Uh, and you're not going to hear those types of things about Gabler. Uh, I do wonder, you know, if Sammy was got to the final tribal council, I think he would have been able to like say like, hey, I, I did, you know, zigzagged and did all these things. And, and I think that probably he would have gotten votes, but it would have been such a uh, like opposite argument of what Gabler was able to say, like that winning argument that Gabler had uh, at the final tribal council. I, I need to take a breath. <laughs> So the idea of let's vote Ryan out of the game, it's starting to get some traction. Cody's the first one like, what are we doing? Why why are we voting out Ryan? Uh, like, uh, we're overthinking it. He gets to James. James gets to Carla. You know, they're like, mm, this is like, let's let's not do this, okay? Um, let, this is a uh, not such a great idea. Cassidy's like, but no, but no, this is a good idea. Uh, and people are like, mm, no, we're still just going to vote out Ryan. Uh, we're still going to vote out Janine at this tribal council. Uh, there's a Cassidy, Sammy, and Gabler conversation. And Gabler is, again, given his spiel of like, I am truly a ship looking for safe harbor. I just want to know what's going on with the majority so I know the right names right now. And Sammy's like, yeah, we, we still don't know. Cassidy is like rolling her eyes. She's annoyed. It says everybody is playing scared. Owen, he tells Janine, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Uh, I think I just have to trust James. Uh, we do find out in the next episode, it's actually Gabler who's the one at the last minute to tell Owen the right name. So, you know, Gabler, he, he's looking for safe harbor. He gets the right information. He does pass it along to Owen uh, and helps out Owen, even though, for uh, reasons Owen is really going to like uh, maintain for a really long time that uh, he did not have vote for the right person. Uh, Night 16 Tribal Council. Jeff brings up the social contract. Jeff, he asks Gabler, 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 does this group have a sense of what the established social contract is? And he says, I think so, Jeff. It's been a relationship game. When you step outside of that, especially if you're starting to get too aggressive in the gameplay, you kind of get cracked into line. So it has to be subtle. And with every tribal council, we learn a lot more about those social contracts and those borders or where they're going to get crossed. So Gabler has a really good understanding, okay? Don't rock the boat here. That, that is not something that's appreciated uh, in this group. Subtlety. Subtlety is the way that Gabler has to operate in this game. Uh, Gable, uh, Gabler's comments, uh, it, Carla gets asked about them. And then uh, Jeff says, Carla, what do you think about that? She's like, yeah, subtlety is good, but if it's too subtle, how's the jury going to know what you did? Well, uh, you're going to have to tell them. Uh, and then Jeff goes back to Gabler. Gabler, what do you do when you talk to two people and they tell you plan A, and then you got to talk to more people? And they go, no, 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 we're doing plan B. And he says, oh, that was my whole day, Jeff. I, it's been plan A, plan B for sure. Back to B. Gets bounced around a little bit. So, yeah, tonight's going to be interesting. I think it's going to put a little bit more into focus for tomorrow. 
And one of the things that Gabler does that he does really well, he's able to talk, talk for a while, and he is able to uh, like not really say anything and also like not really like upsetting anybody. You know, you see Sammy at a lot of these tribal councils. Sammy likes to stir the pot. Like, Sammy talks to tribal council. People are sitting up a little bit straighter. Like, oh, what is he saying? Like, uh, what is he? Like, Sammy's like trying to like put messages out there. Like, Gabler is at tribal council. He's like, basically, I am going to talk. I'm going to answer the question, but I'm real. I'm not going to say anything that's going to uh, get my allies uh, like uh, concerned at all. Like, I'm not giving anything away at tribal council. I think it's one of the reasons why he's so trusted by people. All right, episode nine. What about the big girls? Uh, this is where we're going to get our 5-5 five, five split. Owen, he comes back after Tribal Council. Janine got voted out, and he's hot. Uh, like, oh, James get, told me the, the wrong thing. And so he says in front of everybody, uh, like he tells Sammy, we need to talk to Gabler real quick. I'm, if I'm Gabler, I'm like, uh, maybe not right now, Owen. Uh, can we talk later? Uh, but he pulls Owen, uh, you know, Owen pulls Gabler and Sammy aside, and says, okay, um, we we got to talk. Sammy uh, says, Owen's the only person that got left out of this vote. Uh, in reality, Cassidy was the person who voted for Ryan. And for some reason, you know, uh, Owen really tries to play up that he voted wrong on this vote, even though we find out in a flashback, Gabler is the one he told Owen, I'm hearing Janine. So Owen did have the right information, did vote the right way. That was because of Gabler. Uh, but Owen is just not happy about James. At this point in time, I do think that Gabler is kind of anti-Coco. Uh, he's commiserating with Owen. Uh, he says that James is arrogant. Uh, he does seem to be working against uh, Cassidy and Carla at this point in time. Uh, we get to our split tribes twist, okay? So Gabler ends up on the group with Jesse, Cody, Ryan, Cassidy and himself. Uh, Cody wins P, B, and J. And Gabler, he has like highs and lows. He eats and he and he comes back down. He's very excited for the nourishment, the P, B, and J. He talks with Ryan. Ryan is like, well, okay, let's vote out Cassidy tonight. Uh, and they're talking. They talk it through. And Gabler says to Ryan, "All right, I'll tell her your name. You tell her my name. Uh, and and you know, obviously, you know, I can't tell her my name. And you know, it's kind of like a kind of like." I think that's pretty good uh, for like uh, in terms of like a lot of other players wouldn't say like, oh, don't say my name, you know, uh, like to you tell her you're going to vote out Jesse uh, like Gabler is fine with, you know, OK, we're going to let's tell Cassidy that, you know, you're going to vote uh, my name out. He doesn't get like uh, really bent out of shape about that. Uh, we're going to see Ryan Gabler and Cody talk uh, about vote out Cassidy. Gabler calls Coco the three-headed Hydra running everything. Gabler is very concerned about Cassidy, Carla, and James. Uh, we're going to see Jesse, Cody, and Cassidy talking. Uh, this is, again, this is the vote that Cassidy at the Final Tribal Council took a lot of credit for. Cody really is non-committal uh, with talking with Cassidy. I feel like that Jesse was like a little bit more um, like being... Uh, like a little bit more direct with Cassidy where Cody's like, yeah, uh, let's, let's see how it goes. We see Jesse and Cody talking about uh, who they trust more between Cassidy and Ryan. This is like one of the spots in the season where, you know, things are getting very confusing. They like the opposite thing happens of what they said they were going to do. Uh, they say that, uh, you know, Oh, Cass, we could get Cassidy out. Uh, like if, if James stays, uh, he'll be he'll be mad uh, if we vote Cassidy out. So if James stays, uh, we vote out Ryan. And if and if uh, James goes, then oh, Carla will be all alone. We isolate Carla, vote out Cassidy, which is like the opposite of what they ended up doing. Uh, so maybe they arrived on that later, uh, and we just didn't get to see it in the episode. All right, so. Uh, they, they start talking with Gabler, okay, about, uh, like, Jesse and Cody. This is the first we hear about, like, uh, what's going to happen with Gabler. This was apparently more of a thing than we realized at the time. But it is, uh, I have to say, it is in here. I stand, like, I have to give credit. It, it's there. It's subtle, but it's there. Uh, Cody talking about Gabler. 
He says, I've always liked Gabler. He's been a pretty straight shooter this whole time. And he's a free agent that will be loyal. And that's somebody I want to pick up. And honestly, I think that's how everybody saw him. The same way that Cody describes him. He is a pretty straight shooter that will is a free agent that will be loyal. He's somebody that I want to pick up. And I think a lot of these people also thought, and if he hears my name, he'll tell me. Guess what? He doesn't do that. He doesn't tell you when it's going to be you. He is loyal to you up until like he finds out you're going and then he says nothing, okay? But you don't get mad at him because it, you know it wasn't his idea. He just goes with the plan. So, you know, uh, he ends up like uh, sticking around and also, like, getting none of the blood on his hands. But you don't get mad at him because, you know, he was loyal up until that point. Anyway, we see Gabler and Cody. They're in, like, a, like a hand lock, uh, like, handshake. And Cody says, I want to trust you 100%. That's what I want to come out of this. Gibbs, okay, 100% right here. He says, the strong three, Cody tells him, is going to be me, you, and Jesse. Gabler says, deal. Uh, Gabler says, Cody approached me. I think we can work together. That's music to my ears. I'm thinking the same thing. I think I've positioned myself pretty well 17 days in where people are approaching me and it is so crucial going into this point in the game. Cody tells Gabler, I don't know what's going to happen between Ryan and Cass. I don't decide where our vote's going to go. I don't think Jesse has. Obviously, we know where Ryan and Cass is going I think it's going to depend on who's out in the other vote, but I want it to be 100% like ride or effing die, bro. Gabler says done ride or die. And Cody has a confessional. He says that Gabler is rock solid with him and Jesse in the real time. I was like, no, he's not. He's with Owen. He's with, he, you know, uh, that he's, he's not like with Jesse and Cody, like Jesse and Cody, this is a blind spot for them. They think Gabler's with them. He's working with all the, with Sammy, with Noel, uh, that he's got a lot of other stuff going on. He's not with those guys. Uh, I don't know. I guess, I, I, I guess he kind of was. So night 17, James gets voted out. He's sitting on the jury. It's like really like a um, tribal council. I don't even think Gabler gets a question at the tribal council. Ultimately, Ryan goes home. He's got 30 pounds of clamshells. He doesn't get back to the USA with them. Uh, so everybody's going to get back together. Final eight, episode 10. Get that money, baby. Uh, this is where Noelle, she wins the incredible reward challenge. She picks people to go on the reward with her. She does not pick Gabler. Uh, so the people that are left out of the reward they're all talking. Uh, there's Cassidy. She is like working on Cody. Uh, she's talking about, hey, it's time to go after the big threats in this game, like Noel. Uh, Cassidy says, uh, she she says the confessional. She says she doesn't know where Gabler is in the game. So we see um, back at the camp that Noel had a thing, like uh, it was like Noel and Owen versus Cassidy and Carla at this point in the game at the final eight. And so, Cassidy and Carla, they get a hold of Gabler and they talk to him at the well. Uh, and Cassidy's like, so uh, do you where do you see yourself moving forward in the game? And Gabler's like, yeah, well, it's good. we got to see who's going to win tomorrow. You know, if we could, again, again, Gabler does not have like super warm feelings towards the Coco people at this point in time. Uh, and so uh, he says, well, um, Cassidy wants to know, how do you feel about like Noel and stuff? And he's like, well, I like her a lot personally. I mean, obviously, I mean, she's a hero inside the game for me. Uh, I, I thought that from the beginning. I've said that multiple times. And Cassidy's like, well, she's a big threat. I don't want I wouldn't want to sit in the end next to her. Uh, and Gabler's like, well, you know, we got to see who wins the challenge. And then we can make a decision. And Carla's like, all right, and then, and then we'll talk. And Gabler's like, because then we're going to have to make a decision. And Cassidy's like, well, I, I would like to vote with you. He's like, okay, let's do that. Let's do that. If you're vote, if we're voting tomorrow, let's let's do that. So they kind of have like a very non-committal conversation. Uh, but Gabler is now feeling it a little bit. Uh, he says a confessional, and he says, I I position myself in a nice spot. Both sides are wanting me to vote with them, and neither side is talking about voting for me. So I think that's a really good place to be. I've got options, and options are really big in this game. And if you take a look at like. All of the, at the final eight, like all of the different pockets of power in the game, Jesse and Cody, they've got ride or die with Gabler. Now, 
Cassidy and Carla are talking to him about, oh, hey, Gabler, who are you voting for? Uh, Owen and Noel are counting on Gabler. Sammy uh, feels like, so it really, Gabler does, he has alliances with everybody and nobody is writing his name down. He is, like, he's right. He's in a very good spot. Uh, we go to commercial off of Gabler's uh, confessional, which I think does give it, like, more significance in hindsight. Uh, they go to the challenge, and ultimately Cassidy wins the House of Cards challenge here. So Cassidy is immune, okay? Uh, and so there was some talk about splitting the votes on Carla and Cassidy at this round uh, because Carla has the idol, but now this definitely complicates things. And so Gabler is going to talk to Noel and Owen after the challenge. This is, uh, I, I think, interesting where Gabler, uh, I, I don't know if this is a, a slip up here or exactly what he's doing. Gabler says to Noel, and he, uh, honestly, I, I think he has a soft spot for Noel. I, I think that's really what this comes down to. He says to Noel, uh, Cass and Carla, you know, they're up to something. And Owen's like, oh, they're, they're trying to get Noel. And he's like, yeah, Noel, they're, they're, they're looking at you. And Owen's like, are they going to, are they going to flip Cody? He's like, and, and Jesse, but Jesse and Cody are fine. But Sammy though, he would go either way. Uh, he does. He just throws Sammy under the bus. Uh, Noel's takeaway is like, oh, I can't trust Sammy. Noel and Owen, they're going to try to split the votes on Carla and Sammy. But this round, but now this is where Jesse is going to work. Jesse tells Cody, uh, that Noel has a plan to take out Carla. Uh, they don't like this plan. Okay. Uh, that uh, he tells Co Jesse tells Cody they need to go after Noel. This is where we have that great scene. Jesse talks about the three things you need to do. You need to have a cover story. You need to throw the fall guy under the bus. Have a backup plan. Okay. It interestingly, the freeze frame number three. Have a backup plan. Is Gabler. Gabler is the backup plan. Okay. Uh, backup plan for Jesse, uh, backup plan for the season. Jesse talks to Gabler and, and, uh, Gabler's uh, says to Jesse. So I haven't talked to you yet today. Uh, we're, are we still, we're still going to vote, uh, Carla and Sammy and split it. And Jesse's like, well, uh, Cody was hoping that me, you and him would take out Noel. He's like, oh, okay. Blindside Noel. Jesse asks, are you, are you, are you okay with that? Uh, gives, uh, yeah, uh, I think so. Let me just think about that for a second. Yeah, uh, for sure. Cause you know, I've got relationships with Owen and Sammy that are going to get torched by this and got to think about the jury at some point. So this is like that Gabler has been given a name and he's hedging. I think he has a soft spot for Noel. Um, and Jesse's like, you know, in his bag, he's uh, talking about like all of the steps. He's like, Gabler is smart. Right. And he's thinking things through. And so in this game, you can't just tell him to vote a certain way. You have to make it make sense for him. Right. And so I was trying to get Gabler to sort of envision his position in the game after this vote. I want him to envision like himself in the power position. Maybe he did too good of a job here. Jesse, uh, <laughs> Jesse tells Gabler, me and Cody, we took out her other friend, Justine, and then she's got a friend in Dwight. Then we took out Dwight, and then she had another friend in Owen. And then she did that huge move in front of the jury. So every time we try to weaken her, it strengthens her. She's a warrior. He's like, oh, yeah, she's a warrior. Uh, like, I don't know. Like, I, I know she's she's got to go before we get too far. Then we could be back in the middle again tomorrow night who and choose who we want to go. Jesse, I mean you. We could be in Cody. We'd be in a very powerful position. He's like, all right, I get it. I'm voting Noel tonight. Uh, and Jesse has sold Gabler on this. But Gabler does something very interesting here uh, that Gabler has not really worked with Carla uh, very much. That, 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 that one conversation by the well, Gabler grabs Carla and he's like, uh, he says, so I think I, I think it's going to be okay, but I'm a little concerned about Jesse and Cody. They're very powerful. We probably need to deal with that. Okay. Uh, and Carl's like, yeah, I, I agree. And Gabler says, Jesse made a real quick move. I understand that Noel's a powerful player, but I don't like to be surprised, especially minutes before tribal council. Gabler says to Carla, they're running the show. They've done several big blind sides and they're doing a big one tonight. Uh, we'll figure it out. He says that they're the real power couple out here. So tonight I'm trying to think of what's best for me. And I've got claws just like anybody else out here. That was actually a confessional, not, uh, not to Carla. All right. So 
We go to tribal council. This is where Noel is going to get voted out. Uh, hey, Gabler, what, what part of the surgery are we at right now? I was like, oh, there's a lot of stuff happening. Um, anyway, Gabler just gives kind of a vague answer to that. There's this point. Uh, Jeff asks a question uh, to Gabler about uh, the, the duck analogy. He asks, he asks him, uh, he, he asks him, Gabler, one. really, it's the duck. Up top, <laughs> underneath. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So he he asks him about that. Like, uh, what's what's uh, it's it's like it's just like the duck thing, right, Gabe? It's just like the duck. Uh, no, I thought he's an Alec Gabler. Uh, he says, "Well, what I think is happening is that most of these killers now are working with silencers. That's what's going on." Jeff's like, "Who are you pointing to?" Uh, he's like, everybody, everybody up here. Uh, there's not like a grenade blowing up. There are precision targets that are, there's a lot of work going into them and there is going to be one bullet fired tonight. And I think it's probably going to hit the mark and I think it's going to hit, but, uh, we're going to find out. This is really the beginning of where Gabler's like colorful, uh, assassin metaphors start to, to begin. And, uh, it, it starts here. It is very fun uh, because, again, he is able to finish the job. Uh, you know, he is the he is hiding in plain sight. He is the assassin of the season who is working quietly with the people, with the silencers. And he is like a hitman who is, you know, uh, working to take people out uh, when needed. So uh, he is, uh, you know, working for hire. Um, Jeff loves this story about the assassins. All right. for 11. It's called. Hiding in plain sight. Adam uh, Klein and I, uh, we were so close to talking about the Gabler hiding in plain sight. Uh, we actually were uh, talking about that in uh, after episode 12. But night 19 after Tribal, Sammy, now he's scrambling. He got left out of the vote. Uh, that Carlos like, who voted for me? Uh, Sammy's like, I think it was Gabler. Uh, they're like, oh, Gabler? And all right, it was me. It was me. Okay. Um, Owen and Gabler talk, Okay. Gabler says, I knew Owen would be very betrayed by tonight's reversal of the vote. So I immediately pulled him aside. He was the first person I talked to. Gabler tells Owen, I was trying to signal to you that Cody and Jesse flipped. They told me about it at the last second. But here's the good news. I've got a plan for me and you to get to the final three. All right. Two things on this. Um, I think this is a lie. I, I don't think that Gabler was trying to signal to uh, he did it once before, and maybe that's why it's a good lie because uh, that that Owen's like, well, he did try tell me that other time who to vote for. I don't know if Gabler was actually trying to signal to Owen that Cody and Jesse flipped. Uh, that I think that would be a big mistake. Although he did tell Carla. Uh, second, that we did not know in the real time who who was Gabler talking about when he says to Owen, "I've got a plan for me and you to get to the final three. Owen confirmed to me in his exit interview after the season that it was Cassidy. So at this point, it's night 19. We're a week away from the final three that Gabler is saying to Owen, Hey, let's go to the final three with Cassidy. And Owen's like, Oh, I don't know. I'm going to lose. You know, I mean, if you want to take me, I, and he says, I, I haven't voted right since Mariah again. Why are you lying to Gabler? Owen Gabler was the one that told you to vote for Janine. <laughs> Why is why line? I mean, maybe that Gay, that he told Gabler he didn't do that. He didn't listen to him. Uh, Gabler's like, dude, I'm telling you, it's not as bad as you think. It'll be better tomorrow morning. Trust me. Uh, Gabler is in a confessional. He says, I am in a good position. I have a relationship with everybody out here. And even tonight, when I was part of a blind side, no one is talking about me as the target. I'm hiding in plain sight. He's going to say that like, 500 more times. He's hiding in plain sight. It's the name of the episode. Uh, Gabler tells, oh, I have a really good plan. Okay. And they, you know, have a great conversation. I love you. I love you. It's all good. Okay. Day 20. All right. Um, we see a little bit about how uh, Sammy, he told Carla that Cassidy said, write, uh, write his name down. Um, Carla is now thinking about voting out Cassidy. Sammy tells a big lie. Carla buys it. Uh, is thinking about voting out Cassidy. All right. We have our open idol hunt on day 21. Okay. Uh, they wake up in the morning. There's an advantage hidden on the beach. Uh, I didn't realize this in the real time. I guess this must have been like, okay, they woke them up first thing in the morning. Go look for the idol. And then after you go look for the idol, go to the immunity challenge. Uh, it seems like that there was nothing going on 
on day 20. And I think day 21 might have been just like wake up first thing in the morning, do the choose your champion advantage, do last gasp, and then get to tribal council. It seems like uh, that might have been a jam packed day, uh, day 21. So they the, everybody goes out, they're looking for the advantage. Gabler says, we need to do a LERP walk, long range reconnaissance patrol. Uh, that they're walking past the idol. And everybody's like, I, I can't believe it. we watched it. We said, guys, what are you doing? It's right there. Are you are that? Can, can't you see it? In some ways, Gabler is the idol and we're the survivors and we're walking past it. We missed it. We missed it. I have 30 pages of notes on just what Gabler did in this season. I missed it. We all missed it. It was right there. And 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 people from the future are like going back and listening to the podcast. Like, you idiots. It was right. How did you walk past it 900 times? The episode's called Hiding in Plain Sight. What are you doing? We didn't see we didn't see it. We didn't see it. We were all the survivors. And finally, Cody sees it. And then ultimately, uh, he gets to bet. He bets on Owen. They go to the last cha- last gas challenge. Uh Owen and Carla, they beat they outlast the challenge. They beat the tide. Okay. And now we come back to camp. Two people are immune. Cody's going to be immune. Cassidy is scrambling. Okay, she's worried. People might vote for her because they want to take Carla down a peg. Uh, What Cassidy doesn't know is that Carla is thinking, like, I'm going to vote out Cassidy here uh, in this round. So Carla is telling Jesse and Cody and Sammy, hey, all right, let's let's vote out Cassidy. Uh, Sammy's like, are you serious? You really do this? He's like, yeah. She's like, yeah, let's do it. Vote out Cassidy. Uh, Jesse talks to Gabler, okay? Um, Gabler says, if you look at the alliances right now, you know, you've got Cass and Carla are tight. If, if, if we're going to do anything, you go Cassidy now, Carla tomorrow. Um, if Gabler is trying to go to the final three with Cassidy, not sure why he's throwing out her name here in this spot, but it also could be that there are not a lot. Look, it's the final, it's, it's the final, what, seven and three people are immune. Uh, and he, he doesn't want to get voted out. So, and you're talking to Jesse, who's, uh, so there's not a lot of other options for him. So maybe he was willing to cut bait with Cassidy here. Um, they go to tribal council. Okay. Um, so... Jeff asks, uh, all right, Gabler. It seems like Gabler gets the first question in a lot of tribal councils. Uh, what happens when you get back to camp? And Gabler says, well, there's seven people left. That's a magical time in Survivor history. Things happen. The fact that you have one, two, th- potentially three people out of the seven that are immune, that's a lot of chaos. Uh, Sammy starts talking about his shot in the dark. Uh, and Jeff goes back to Gabler and says, uh, Gabler, I hear it. Sammy playing the shot in the dark. Does that change it? anything? How's your pulse doing? He's like, no. I'm going to continue on with the way I believe that I'm going to vote when I came in here. I'm sticking to the plan. And again, that so many of these players, they really, they, this is what they like. They don't like Sammy standing up and saying he's going to do something different. Uh, they like having Gabler that you can count on him. He's dependable. Um, and Jesse even says, yeah, I, I agree that trust is the currency in this game. Uh, when you take a look at how people voted in the final three, like which of these players like w- had the most trust uh, and you understand why they had so many fond feelings towards Gabler. Um, Sammy gets voted out. All right. We're down to the big final six. All right. Telenovela. It's day 22. Sun comes up. Owen, he's disappointed. The plan didn't work. Jesse had a plan. He wanted to have Carla cast a vote for Cassidy. That was going to make them mad. It didn't happen. Uh, Owen tells Cassidy about this plan. Carla was talking about you. Cassidy's pissed. She goes to Carla. Carla's like, oh, how could you? Why I, Why could you say this about me? Uh, so Carla, is, uh, she she basically is uh, like telling novella, there's the waterworks, uh, that she's excited. She's like, Jesse, go tell Go tell Cassidy that, uh, that that's not true. He's like, yeah, uh, by the way, er- everything about Carla, uh, she was trying to get you out. Uh, so Cassidy is on to Carla. Uh, we have the reward challenge. Uh, everybody is split into the group of three, the group of three of Cody, Carla, Owen. They go off. They go and have a reward together. They have the coffee. It has a lot of effects on the season. Uh, maybe if this uh, oops all Cody, we'll get into that. So Gabler, he's back at camp with Jesse and Cassidy. Gabler 
is talking to them. He's like, uh, you know, I found in Survivor, every time you get kicked in the gut, there's some victory that comes out of this thing. Uh, Gabler does a confessional. He's like, the reward challenge today was was bittersweet. Actually, it was just bitter because we didn't get any sweet. But but this close to the end, there's very strong players that we need to get out of the way for me to win this game. And so he starts telling Jesse and Cassidy, we could talk maybe about going to the final three. You know, I, I think it would be great for the three of us. We could be down there. We all have very different stories. And Jesse's like, okay, yeah, right. Gabler says, because, you know, Cody made claim that his story is your story. You know what I mean? Like, I did that. Well, no, I did that. And Carla will claim that your story is her story. And so Gabler tells us in confessional, this is maybe his most important confessional of the season. I planted the seed to get rid of Cody and Carla. And you know what's awesome? I don't think people see the game I'm playing. The best assassin doesn't show up at the castle with an axe saying, I'm here to kill the king. He or she slips into the kitchen, puts a vial of poison in the king's bowl, and leaves. He is these. Nobody sees Gabler coming. He is the person hiding in plain sight. Who's the person that shows up at the castle with an axe? Maybe Owen. Maybe Sammy. The, this group, they, they didn't like that, you know? But, but Gabler. He weaves his way in. They never see it. They never suspect that this is the game that he is playing. And then ultimately, when he tells them that it was, they're sort of like, oh yeah, he kind of was doing that. And so this was, uh, I, I think this is like, you know, really cool that this stuff is in there. Uh, Cassidy's like, you know, you're right. We need to get him or Carla on this next vote. Gabler's like, I think that's a great idea. Yeah, it was your idea. Uh, Gabler says, I'm hiding in plain sight. I'm wearing some pretty impressive camo. Maybe that's it, right? Look at me right now. I'm just like frozen in a tree. They just don't seem to see me, which is fine. He, uh, he's a regular John Cena. Uh, Gabler says, I mean, uh, it's no doubt Cody or Carla. So he's really, she's, he's, he's, he's working it with these two. And Jesse's like, yeah, I'm a little worried uh, about Carla having an idol. And Cassidy comes right out. She's like, yeah, oh no, Ca Carla has an idol. And so Gabler pounces. He says, well, ideally we could flush an idol and we could eliminate one of those two big threats. And, you know, like, uh, I know some people are probably saying this like, yeah, duh. Like you need to get out these, uh, these threats. But Jesse in his confessional says, Cass saying that Carla has an idol just sort of reaffirms that like Gabler is right. Cody and Carla are sort of threats because they have these idols. They have these guaranteed paths into the final five. And so what that is this a move that Gabler can take ownership of? No, but did he take a little vial of poison and and put it in Jesse's ear and Cassidy's ear in this spot? Like I think like uh, you know, m more than 0%, you know? He got them thinking about some things that maybe they weren't necessarily thinking of and this conversation did directly uh like lead to Cassidy point blank telling Jesse and Gabler about Carla's idol, uh, which Carla is going to be, you know, basically, you know, uh, promising to Cody on this reward challenge that she does not have an idol. And so uh, this conversation also leads to Cassidy publicly confirming uh, that no, uh, Carla does have the idol and that information uh, is out there, which does lead to Cody's plan and ultimately to uh, Jesse's plan. Anyway, um, Cody comes back. Gabler goes right to Cody says, Carla has the idol for sure. Cody's like, what? Uh, she said that she doesn't have it. He's like, no, she does. Uh, and so they're talking about if she plays her idol, Cody's going to play his idol. And then um, they're talking about, okay, well, what they'll have to do is split the votes, uh, put, you know, two on cast, two on Carla, flush the idol or, or, or whatever, however they're going to do it. If they get uh, like three and they get cast and Carla voting for each other. Gabler says they can flush her idol. And so they're going to go to the immunity challenge. All right, anybody but Carla can win uh, immunity here. Uh, and this will be fine. Cody says they're going to knock out the women. They're going to go to the final five and final four. Cassidy wins immunity, okay? Gabler, uh, he says, I caramba. Talks to Owen. Uh, and they say, this is a very bad scenario for us. Yeah, it is. Because now uh, Cassidy is immune. Carla has an idol. And Cody has an idol. Also, Jesse has an idol. And so there is like, you know, the advantage get in scenario uh, that they don't really know about. Uh, but basically that one of their names definitely are going to be 
out there on the chopping block. Uh, this is, uh, you know, not a great spot for them. And they realize it. Uh, Gabler says this is going to be his biggest hurdle in the game here at the final six. So Cody and Carlo, they both talk about this plan. They're like, hey, you know, what if you played your idol? I played my idol. We'll tell them, but we actually won't do it. Uh, Carlo's like, oh, this is great. This is great. We're going to intimidate them. We're going to say we're going to play our idols. We're not going to. Carla gets Owen to say he'd vote for Gabler. Carla gets Gabler to say that he would vote for Owen. Meanwhile, Cody's telling people that they are going to get out Carla. They've got this plan. She's not going to play her idol, and they're going to vote her out. He's lying to her. He doesn't feel bad about it. He's doing it, okay? Uh, Jesse is like, eh, I feel like this is getting to be a little bit of Cody's move. Everybody's loving Cody. Um, maybe thinking a little bit about what Gabler had been talking about. Jesse tells Owen, he's like, this is trust, okay? I got to tell you this. Um, Cody doesn't have his idol. We can vote for Cody. Now, in my exit interview with Jesse, he talked about how he had a separate conversation with Gabler. It was not in the episode. Gabler didn't know that Jesse, that uh, Cody didn't have his idol. Uh, Jesse just said, hey, we're voting for Cody tonight. And he's like, okay, man, whatever you say, man. Like, and he said, like, I came here, like, I came here to play hard. I came here to win. And he just said, hey, let's just do it. And I think that meant a lot to Jesse that he was just basically like, hey, I'll, I'll follow you. And to go along with, you know, what Gabler told me in the exit interview, any threat at any time, you know, that's something that uh, Gabler, you know, uh, stuck by in the game feeling like, okay, and this was also like he he really wanted Carla or Cody to go out this round. And also Cody, I think, was feeling like, hey, if anything ever goes down, Gabler will tell me, you know, he's a ride or die. He'll tell me about it. Um, he doesn't. So they go to tribal council, of course. Uh, you know, who could ever forget uh, this move that happens, uh, Cody getting voted out. Uh, there's a lot of talk about you know, what they're doing is, are they bluffing? Well, Carlos like, well, I, you know, I've got something here tonight too. Um, Gabler gets like, some questions to tribal council. He's like, it's an apex predator buffet out there. So again, you know, like compliments to the big power players in the game. Ultimately, Cody is going to go home. The finale of Survivor 43, okay? Snap some necks and cash some checks. Day 24, uh, everybody gets a little bit of a spotlight in the opening. Gabler says in the opening, he's like, we're in the final stage. It's day 24. I don't have that much left in the tank because I got to find more because I, I think I've got a strong chance of winning if I can get to the final three. I'm the guy hiding in plain sight. I am the assassin. One by one, my opponents are falling and I'm continuing to move forward. No one is looking at me yet, but there are no breaks in Survivor 43. I've got to pull it together. All right. They go to this new camp. They get the tree mail. They get a clue. Gabler is uh, not in the mix in the word puzzle. Uh, ultimately, Owen gets it first. Carla beats him to it. Carla gets the advantage. Owen wins the final five immunity. They come back to camp. Owen and Cassidy are off having a reward. Uh, Gabler is, uh, like, he's really back to, you know, I I've talked about a little bit like Gabler's highs and lows from the energy level perspective. Um, I think he really thought Owen was going to take him to the uh, dinner reward that Owen won. He was said he was disappointed. He really thought Owen uh, was going to take him. Ultimately, he doesn't. He's just like eating a coconut. Um, and so he jumps into a conversation that Jesse and Carla are having. Jesse is talking about voting out Cassidy. Uh, Gabler, he's uh, no bueno. Uh, he says, I don't want to vote out Cassidy right now, but I think... I want to be sitting next to Cassidy and Owen for the final three. I think I've got a better story to tell than either of those two. So my goal is to take out Carla and Jesse. If that happens, then I think I've got a really good shot at the million dollars. Okay. Carla talks to Gabler. She's like, oh, we should vote Jesse out tonight. Um, uh, it's not going to come together. Ultimately, uh, Jesse is going to have his idol we have, um, you know, lots of conversations about the threat levels. Carla is like talking about like, yeah, Jesse's a threat. Look what he did at this yesterday. And she's really uh, like trying to get people to consider voting out Jesse. Maybe he has a fake idol. Um, Carla is like saying, well, you know, like uh, maybe we could tr she's trying to get something going uh, here at this spot. Goes out of the game fighting. Gabler doesn't really have anything to say at this tribal council. Uh, Jeff just asked him a question. He gives a pretty vague answer here. Uh, and ultimately, Carla 
goes out of the game. Final four. All right, we know Cassidy wins immunity. Back at camp, Cassidy has a decision to make. Oh, we see Owen really bummed out, but he's going to start to practice the fire making. Jesse's practicing the fire making. Tells, Jesse tells Cassidy, you should make the fire against me. Gabler, uh, he is depleted. He tells us he's lost 20 to 25 pounds, but he says, I need Cassidy to help to put me in the fire. He says for the first time, he's going to donate the entire prize to charity. He's going to donate 100% of the prize to veterans in need. Cassidy has to make a decision of what she wants to do. Cassidy does not want to throw herself into the fire, nor should she have to. Uh, but she goes to the tribal council. Uh, and so that Jeff is getting into, all right, uh, what, what was your, what, what did you say to Cassidy? And he goes to Gabler and he says to Gabler, Gabler, what was your pitch? Uh, my pitch was, please let me make fire. Uh, I, and then <laughs> Jeff said, wait, you want to do it? He's like, I want to get to the final three. I want to go to the final three in a blaze of glory. That's literally what I said. And then I worked on some coconuts and I'm ready to rock it out in one of these stations. I want to end my 25 days with an exclamation mark. Uh, I mean, and he will, he's going to break the record. Um, I do think that the way that Gabler also like was, uh, like took advantage of this opportunity, you know, in a way like, and it doesn't end up coming across effective for what, you know, what Cassidy is trying to do. Cassidy wants to get Jesse out of the game. Um, but she kind of like is going to put Gabler into the fire making and Gabler is able to frame it as like, I said, please put me into the fire. I wanted this opportunity. I want like, so Gabler is almost like taking it and kind of stealing Cassidy's thunder of like, he's almost like the person who won immunity. Like he could have had a safe spot in the final three. He's taking off the necklace. He's giving it up. He's the one who's putting himself into the fire. Uh, I, again, I, I don't think that that's necessarily how you should vote for a player to win the game. But I do think that he sort of like hijacks this move of like, a move that could be framed as Cassidy's move of, hey, I got Jesse out of the game. He's making it into his move of, I want the opportunity to die. I want to slay the dragon. Put me out there. Um, and so and it's not even like that Carla is like forcing him to do it. He's like, he wants to do it. Uh, and the jury is like, oh, okay. All right. Look, you go, Gabler. Uh, and he, he breaks the record. Doesn't all time fastest time. Uh, he has learned a few things from when he could not get the fire started on day one, from when Ellie had to talk to him about little sticks. Uh, he builds a great fire, wins day 26 breakfast. It's Gabler. It's Owen. It's Cassidy. Uh, Gabler talks about himself. He's at 51 years old. I made the final three. I didn't get dragged along. I made fire. I, I got, I suffered. I battled and I've never received one vote, which is why tonight I hope that Jeff gets a uh, reads all the votes on their parchment. Uh, again, amazing that Gabler is very close to a perfect game uh, here. in sorry. It does it, it. I mean, that's really phenomenal that he doesn't get one. Again, had he not won that immunity, I do think, I, I, I do think he would have gotten votes during the merge. Uh, I just think that like uh, circumstances were, and, and I give him the credit too, uh, but because he won that immunity challenge, he was not available to be voted for at the merge vote. And then that first vote after the merge vote, I think it completely changed the trajectory of his game. And he recognized he was in trouble, uh, you know, not to take anything away from him, but uh, it is like uh, pretty wild. Um, we get to see some people from the jury talking about, uh, you know, uh, Gabler. Ryan says, you know, he wasn't a flip-flopper, even though he voted around. Janine says he was an enigma. What was intentional and what wasn't? You know, he's talked about kind of like a person like coach, like what was real, what wasn't real. Um, and I think he's going to do a really good job at the final tribal council of being able to address those concerns. Cody just has nothing but praise for Gabler. I think Cody loved Gabler. He says he's 20 years older than everybody else and he was able to integrate with a much younger cast. That's impressive. Hinges game on relationships he's built. Uh, Gabler frames this as the battle of the champion which is Cassidy, the underdog, which is Owen, and the outsider. I, I think people love an outsider in a three-party uh, thing of like, hey, like, uh, you know, this is like, uh, you know, the the uh, the are you going to go for the status quo or me, the outsider? Uh, so, yeah, I, th I think he does a good job of positioning himself uh, all the way through. Final tribal council, okay? Um, so 
just a couple of things here I want to uh, get through. A couple of different questions and Gabler's answers to them. I'm not going to go through what Owen and Cassidy had to say. Again, this is Oops All Gabler. Noel asks, how would you differentiate your games from the others? And Gabler goes first. He says, thanks, Noel. So my game has been very much relationship-based and trust-based. Being somebody that can be counted on, that's how I was playing. And I'll tell you, I have been in an alliance with each and every one of you guys at this point. I was with the Coco crew. I was with the Baca boys. And then raise your hand if you were in the ride or die alliance. But I was never seen because I was talking behind the scenes with all the different alliances. And I had multiple ways to get deeper in the game. Even when I was at 10, I had a couple different ways to get to seven. When I was at seven, I had a couple different ways to get to five. When I was at five, I had two ways to get to three. So being in these different groups, it was very helpful. And guess what? 26 days, no one has written my name down. Not once. I do want you to write my name down tonight. I'm going to give you more, tell you more reasons later. But I hope for now I answered your question. Thank you. And he's right. He was, he did work with every single the, James. The one vote he didn't get was the one person that you could say that he really he uh, he wasn't in the seven. He uh, didn't have a thing going with Coco earlier on. But uh, for the other seven people on the jury, yeah, he I mean he did have an alliance going with everybody. Owen says at the final breakfast. Um, Owen uh, says something along the lines of like, "Hey, uh, it's going to be us up to us." to figure out what they're looking for. Gabler, again, does the best job of figuring out what people are looking for. I think that this is a trend that I have noticed across Survivor, certainly in the new era, across Big Brother also. I think what you actually did in the game is less important than being able to recognize how you are perceived and just be proud of that perception and own that perception of this is what I was doing and have that viewpoint be consistent with what the other, I, what Gabler did in the game. You could certainly could argue that uh, he has less pelts than Cassidy and Owen, who each won three immunity challenges. You know, uh, Cassidy was in the majority alliance. She was in the seven. She was part of Coco and the power dynamics. But Gabler was able to deliver a much more like consistent vision of this is what I did. This is how I saw myself. This is what I was doing. And people on the jury were saying, you know what? Yes, that is what he was doing. That is consistent with we've been talking about him. And this is what, yes, we agree that he had the, the best self-awareness. I think it's such an important thing. I mean, look at the uh, Marianne nailed it. Erica, she nailed, she nailed it compared to, uh, Deshaun and Xander and how they were viewed by the other people playing on their season. Uh, look at look at Big Brother. How Taylor uh, was able to do uh, in her final two against Monty. I, I just think that this is something that the modern jury really wants. It's less important what you did and it's more important to know how you were seen and really take ownership of that. Um, I, I think that this is something that I'm going to be watching for a lot in future seasons. I think this is a, a great thing that kind of explains how Gabler ends up being the runaway winner here this season. Um, James asked a question. Uh, when did you stick your neck out on the line to uh, for uh, to trust an ally? Again, James always comes back to trust. James is uh, really big on, you know, were you a trusted person? I think that he really sort of like, was somebody who also helped really establish that as the currency of the season. Gabler throws out the Ellie vote. So the Ellie vote, let's talk about that for a second. Ellie had looked through my bag. Also, it was Ellie, uh, but, uh, you, you know, yes. And, and then Janine's like, all right, I, I, let me, and she comes clean about the whole thing. She says, Gabler, your instincts were spot on. You had killer instincts. Like that relationship with Janine and Gabler uh, is interesting. You know, when I did my exit interview with Janine, she also like, she spoke very highly uh, of Gabler. I think that they had a closer relationship than we ever got to see on the show. Um, I'd be interested to hear from Janine now about like uh, just uh, how warm uh, was that relationship? She's, and, and and they they have a nice moment. And he's like, so, so I, I was right. I was like, something's not right here. And I stirred the pot. Me and Ellie, we had a very public argument in camp and we got her voted out. And then she flamed me in front of the whole jury here. She said, that's what you get for trusting Gabler. And I'm like, whoa, way too high profile here. Like an alligator. 
I need to go underwater and start playing a different game. And they're like, no, yeah. Yeah, you know what? That did happen. That was very that 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 was consistent with our view of you know big public uh blow up. And then Gabler was it was able to get back under the radar. It wasn't something that we talked about. Also, I think the split tribal council also then after that uh helped where then you know but that there was a lot of other things that happened. Um, but you know, Gabler benefits from all those. Uh Jesse asked a question about what was an example of how you used your social game to get ahead. Uh Gabler says. So after the Ellie takeout, Allie Gabler had to go underwater and they're laughing and they're like, they're like uh, I'm going back. Like people are giving him like finger guns, like the jury, they're, they're eating this up. Uh, and he's like, uh, and I had to hang up by the water's edge and just don't say uh, like, uh, oh, it's me. I'm the guy. No, even though I could have been Gabler in the library with coconut, I wanted it to be a total secret, right? So because of my social game and the information I was getting, I was able to dig deeper, get in the game with more options. And, and he really, the fact of like, hey, what did you do? Uh, like, he's like, no, this was this was my plan that I didn't want you guys to think that I was doing anything, but I was doing things um, as opposed to like, no, I did like, uh, like I did so many, I did so many things and, you know, I took, and like, he was not fighting for scraps with anybody who was on the jury. It was just, um, again, I don't know necessarily like how much he can he knew. I mean, it, it is consistent with what he says during the season of being the assassin, being under the radar. Uh, it, it, I think it was just a very clever lane for him uh, all the way through in this final tribal council. Um, Jesse wants to know, uh, how did you use your social game to get ahead? And he goes back to the Ellie thing again. He says, uh, so after the Ellie takeout, Allie Gabler had to go under the one. Uh, I'm sorry. I read the one. Sorry. It's a long uh, Gabler podcast. So there's some talk about core alliances. Gabler, he's naming out uh, an alliance with you, with you, with you. Sammy stops him. Hey, hey, uh, Gabler, when you flipped to go with Jesse and Cody, was your intention to go uh, the rest of the way with these guys? Or are we going to go back and forth? That's something that we'd all like to know. And Gabler says, I was in ride or die to ride or die, which, uh, you know, it's a, I don't know if that's an intentional callback to, I threw Ellie's name out because I wanted to throw Ellie's name out. He's like, uh, and, and you know, that's having trust and not being targeted. I mean, think back to day one to get all the way here. And I didn't get a vote. I mean, it's lucky, but it's very impressive. And Cassidy, um, that she kind of like lays up like a, like a softball for Gabler. She says, Gabler, so do you think that you didn't get any votes because people didn't perceive you as a threat or because you played it so well with all your different alliances? Um, like, I, I think she probably, like, you know, it, again, this is like hard to nitpick a survivor who hasn't eaten in 26 days. But I think that you probably, like, uh, wouldn't give, like, an A or B where B is, like, kind of a flattering answer. Um, you Maybe you want to say along the lines of, like, uh, so Gabler, but, uh, like, do, do you, uh, like, like you, it, it was probably because uh, you didn't get votes uh, because people like uh, weren't perceiving you as a threat because you didn't do anything, co correct? Uh, you know, as opposed to or because you were doing so well. Um, she, uh, he says, I think it was both. I think it was stayed up tough. I wasn't going to last. Noel, she vouches for Gabler. Uh, so Jesse vouches for Gabler, talking about being the silent killers, and ultimately um, that he's asked about the biggest mistake made in the game. Gabler talks about the first challenge, first couple of days. Uh, and Jesse's last question of how did you persuade a vote? Gabler again throws out the Ellie vote. Um, and Cassidy gets uh, kind of cross-examined over the Ryan vote and Gabler like kind of piles on. He's like, uh, no, uh, I mean, you were part of that. Uh, and then the rest of the jury does the work. And finally, it is time to vote. Carla, the one vote we get to see for Gabler she says the only person that we get to see in the show proper about why they ultimately voted for Gabler. She said, because you took the most risks, you owned up to your game, you made great moves, you're honest in a game full of lies. I appreciate it. And ultimately, I think that's what people saw in Gabler. I mean, he was somebody who came away from the game as somebody who was trusted somebody who had no blood on their hands, somebody with a big heart 
who is a caretaker to many of the players, made great bonds, is a family man. And I think that gave them like straight answers and never came across as shady at any point to any of them. And they all felt like, hey, we all had working relationships with Gabler. He kind of knew like when each of us were going to go home, he voted in the majority most of the time. He didn't get voted for at all the entire game. Uh, he won a challenge. He made the fire faster than anybody ever did. Sure. Uh, let's give him the vote. Does he beat Jesse? I don't think so. Does he beat Carla? I don't think so. Uh, but against Owen and Cassidy, who were not able to deliver to the jury exactly what the jury wanted to hear, it was a good draw for him. And I think he knew that. And so, look, we said, how the hell did Gabler win this thing? What happened? Uh, this was so much fun. I, I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. Uh, this was a really cool for me to go back and find all of the clues. Maybe you agree uh, with all of this. Maybe you have a whole different like perspective on Gabler. I, I know that I did. Again, my mission here is not to say that Gabler is one of the all-time great Survivor players. I don't think he is. I just think that he had a really interesting plan that I feel like he executed on in uh, a a very uh in a very regimented way in terms of like what he wanted to do especially in the second half of the game and i do think that the way that gabler won might tell us more about where we are in survivor in the modern era than we might have expected on finale night so i hope you enjoyed uh this look back at my oops all gabler version of survivor 43 if this is the type of content that you enjoy i suggest uh come on over and become a patron of rob has a podcast of course uh help support content like this and then of course become a part of what i like to believe is the greatest reality tv community in the world uh people from all over the planet who love survivor big brother all of these shows that we get to cover come talk about it in fun ways i'm doing all sorts of interactive shows uh with our patrons in the off season and of course the Survivor Academy, everything that we have to do during the Survivor season, our patron podcast feed, and more. That's all waiting for you at robhaswebsite.com slash patron. Thank you so much for joining us for this look back. I hope to be bringing you some exit press soon, uh, some longer interviews with the Survivor 43 contestants. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you subscribe to Rob as a podcast. For a podcast, go to robaswebsite.com slash subscribe or on YouTube, hit that subscribe button to uh, get everything we're doing on Survivor. Take care, everybody. Have a good one. Bye.